Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and today I'm taking my first step into the wonderful and bizarre world of Malifaux, with my first painting tutorial. In keeping with the spirit of the season, I wanted to focus on a December keyword model, and what else encapsulates the chill of the season than a big hunk of sentient ice. Yes, today I'll be showing you step by step how to paint awesome looking cockgast models with a simple and effective palette using the scale 75 paint range, which creates great results with minimal stress and only five paints. Once I assembled my model, I applied a base coat with Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. I hope you guys are ready and excited to start this next journey with me. Brushes ready and let's get painting! I want a nice, vibrant, rich blue hue to base coat the cold guys with. This gives me plenty of manoeuvrability when it comes to the shading and following layers and highlights. To start with, the entire cold guys was base coated using drilled in turquoise. This was applied over a few thinner layers to maintain a smooth, consistent finish. The pigment covers reasonably well over a grey undercoat as we have here or a white undercoat as well. Be careful over a black undercoat as the coverage will be slightly more spotty initially. I'm going to start building in the shades and create some depth amongst the ice crystals. To achieve this I started isolating certain faces of all the crystals and applying a layer over these using a 50-50 mix of drilled in turquoise and sunset purple. I'm trying my best here to keep the more upward and front facing crystals still showing the base coat as this will help represent where light is naturally bouncing off their surfaces. Using a directional light here can help with placement, focusing where the natural shadows gather over the model from your preferred angle. You can repeat this stage multiple times to intensify the shade with each pass adding slightly more sunset purple into the shade mix until you're happy with the overall look. It's time to soften the transition between the blue and purple areas now, blending the harsher edges together and unifying the tone across the model. To achieve this, an all over wash was applied using heavily diluted sunset purple. Now this will have served two purposes. It will strengthen the shades put in place previously and help blend the edges of the crystals together. Be very careful though not to let this pool too much in the recesses. Now that I'm happy with the tone and shadows over the ice, it's time to start the laborious task of layering up the remaining crystal sides and building up the lighter tones and reflections. To start this, I applied a flat layer over all the corners and edges of all the crystals using pure Adriatic Blue. I'm keeping these applications a little on the thicker side at this stage. This gives me a chance to build up the blend when I reach the sharper, more stark edge highlights. This is time consuming, but the more thorough you can be during these stages, the better the overall effect of the ice will look once you're done. With the initial layers and framing over the ice crystals now in place, I can slowly start building up the layers and highlights and creating the sharp, reflective edges of the ice. To start building this up, I applied an initial highlight with a 2 to 1 mix of Adriatic Blue and White. You can of course change the ratio of this if you feel it's necessary, but the white will be gradually built up in the mix as you progress through all the highlight stages. Again, now, I'm tracing around all the edges of the ice crystals as before, but this time keeping my application tighter and more focused to try and build up the blend.
Continue gradually adding in more white to the mix and slowly building up the sharp edges of all the ice crystals now. This can take as long as you want it to, but by the time you reach the final edge highlight stage, you should have a rough ratio mix of 2 to 1 in favour of the white over the Adriatic. With every pass, make sure you keep your brush strokes as unbroken and controlled as possible. The more precise you can be here, the sharper the crystals will look and the stronger the overall effect will be once you're done. When you're happy with how all the line work is looking, it's finally time for the last stage. Here I'm just carefully adding a dot highlight of pure white just at the corners, the very tips and sharpest points of ice. This will reinforce the directional light and reinforce the light bouncing off the crystals. When you're finished you can apply a varnish if you want a little bit of extra shine, but I didn't want my eyes to be quite that glossy. It's all down to personal preference at that stage. The eyes in the centre face were very carefully picked out using purity white. And now, finally, my cult geist is done. Brr, I'm getting chills just looking at this guy. With that, my cult geist is done and ready to hit the table alongside their frigid crewmates. I based my particular cult geist on a snowy textured base, a tutorial for which can be found in my 5 minutes bases tutorial playlist. I really hope you guys enjoyed my first foray into the Malifaux painting tutorials. There will be plenty more coming over time, but until next time guys, take care and as always, happy hobbying.